many families have a, a, what you would call a culture of incest. Uh, we talked a bit about this when you, Jen asked the question yesterday about a culture of incest that occurs in families. And many families on earth have it, and many cultures even have it. The, the issue is always, usually, uh, the damage that occurs to the person on earth, and then there's heavy spirit influence involved in keeping the culture going. And the only way to prevent all of these things from continuing to go is, is by dealing with the emotions that create them. In terms of the harm to the body of the person, any harm genetically that occurs through any interbreed, interbreeding, if we could call it that in the physical level, can be undone at the soul level. So as you grow in divine love, and as you receive more love in your soul, your soul transforms your genetic structure in your body. And so any genetic impurities that are caused through so-called interbreeding are, are automatically gotten rid of anyway. All genetic impurities in your body are actually emotionally caused anyway. So they're all the reflection of emotions that are unhealed. So from God's perspective, if you're saying you're in no error world, um, does that mean there's a chance that souls are born to, you know, like brother, sister, to the same parent? Yeah, there is that chance. Um, the, the chance is obviously going to be remote with six billion people on the earth, but there is that chance. The, in the, for the original human couple, their children were soulmates. And obviously, if you're in a perfect soul form and then you're in perfect physical form, there is no harm if adults choose to have relationships you know, based around that. That's their free will choice anyway. It's when, it's when a, a father has incest with a child or, or mother with the child, doesn't really matter which, which gender, and that's where there's a lot of emotional damage that occurs uh, to the child and obviously a lot of law of conversation emotions to the father or the mother. So, so in a perfect world with all of us perfect in terms of genetically, because we would all be perfect at the soul level, what would, ha what would happen is if, if soul mates were born to a brother or sister, it, there would be no problems with that brother and sister entering into a relation into a soulmate relationship. Obviously, the problem nowadays is the majority of times, you know, there is terrible sexual abuse and terrible uh, uh, emotions that cause incest that have created a lot of those events. And the laws of the country have been created to try to resolve those terrible abusive issues, but unfortunately, child abuse is still very much rife in the world as well as in this country. I just recently saw like a, um, something from the media and it was about a pedophile who he wrote a book and it ended up in you know, libraries around the country and um, I'm sort of asking how that relates to, you said before, some, some spirits choose to stay in a childlike form and are active sexually in that way, so if, if there was a perfect world does that mean there'd be adult forms, having sex with child-like forms, or is, is that, you know, what's going on there? And now we're getting into a lot of the what-if things, Yeah. right? And the problem with a lot of what-if things is that um, a lot of times all, that, all we're doing is discounting love in the transaction. So in the end, every single person is capable of a loving transaction with another person. A child who is un undeveloped is not capable of making a soul choice, if they have a lots of soul damage, about whether this sexual interaction is a, you know, good for them or not. Right? So for this reason, a lot of times children, um, for instance, a lot of children um, have sexual um, contact with other children, right? Do you stress about that? Most parents don't. Some do because they get all the feelings of shame or guilt about their own childhood and that happening. But if a child has a, has a sexual interaction with another child and it's not spirit influenced, generally most of us are, are okay with that transaction occurring, right? And when I say child, similar ages having some kind of interaction. And we view it as experimentation, do we not? Right? Now, now, my question would be, all right, what are the parents' emotions in that situation? Right? Now, a lot of times the parents' emotions will be emotions of shame or guilt or anger or whatever, and that's what that interaction was there to actually trigger, the parents' emotions. 
Now imagine for a moment the parents no longer have an emotion of any sexual injury, they no longer have an emotion of you know, injury towards an opposite gender, they no longer have any of those kind of emotions. Imagine that for a moment. And we've got children. Those children would never be acting out sexual events because there's no law of attraction causing them to act out sexual events. By the time they become sexually mature, in the sense that they start getting, in nowadays it's what, 10, 11, 12, if right? but years ago it used to be 19, 20, 21, which, which is a lot of a comment of our law of attraction. But if by the time they get sexually mature, they will then develop their own feelings and their own relationship. But they'll do it freely in love. And so all of these questions really are then a moot point. Does that make sense? Like they, because everything would be based on love. The problem we're facing today is that everything isn't based on love. It's based on distortions of love and error. And because of that, we ask these technical questions that in the end will all be resolved once we're all in a condition of love and we'll know the answer anyway. Does that, does that sort of help? Like, so, so while I can answer in every single circumstance what's right, what's not, it's far better if we just all get into a state of love and we'll know what's right and what's not straight away and we'll be able to do what's right straight away as well.